Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Taylor Swift truly was a mastermind. One of these things is not like the others, like a rainbow with all of the colors. For this list, we'll be looking at the best Easter eggs that Taylor Swift left for fans in music videos, performances, social media posts, and more. Which cryptic clue had you creating your own Taylor Swift theories? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Look What You Made Me Do Music Video After a year-long hiatus from both music and the public, Taylor Swift returned with a bang. I don't like your little games. A total departure from her usual fare, reputation shocked and delighted longtime and newly anointed fans. Her lead single, Look What You Made Me Do, was especially iconic with a music video filled to the brim with Easter eggs. But I got smarter, I got harder in the nick of time. Some, like outfits from previous eras, were obvious. However, Swifties quickly uncovered more obscure clues, such as the seemingly symbolic $1 bill in the bathtub from her 2017 sexual assault trial. After the first or second watch of this music video, there are still hidden messages to find, even for the most seasoned fan. Look what you just made me do. Number 9. Her 2022 MTV Video Music Awards Outfit The night of the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards has gone down in infamy. When Kanye West hijacked Taylor Swift's acceptance speech for Best Female Video, he ignited a lengthy feud. Yo, Taylor, I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. When we think of the night, Swift's sparkling one-shoulder Kaufman Franco gown stands out in our minds. So it's only right that when she arrived at the VMAs 13 years later, yes, that number, she seemingly paid homage to that controversial night. You guys, I'm just so proud of what we made, and I, I know with ever, you, every Taylor! second. She wowed in a glittering Oscar de la Renta dress that certainly appeared to be a callback to her 2009 look. She also totally surprised fans by announcing her 10th studio album on stage. And we have to applaud her choice of venue. That my brand new album comes out October 21st. Number 8. Midnight's Mayhem With Me There is nothing wrong with a little mayhem, especially when it's conducted by the queen of chaos. I know that I have a habit of dropping cryptic clues and Easter eggs when giving you information about new music, and I am not here to deny that, but I am here to defy that. When Taylor Swift dropped the news that her 10th studio album was on the way, fans knew that something big was coming. What no one expected was Midnight's Mayhem With Me, a TikTok series that had Swift draw a ball from a bingo cage to announce her track list, one title at a time. Track 13, because of course. Track 13 is called Mastermind. Of course, she kept things extra fun and chaotic by doing things like holding the phone she was using upside down for a couple of tracks. We were all sleep deprived for the duration of the series, but it was totally worth it. Track three is called Antihero. Number seven, Me Music Video. When Taylor Swift dropped the music video for Me, she let fans know that the Reputation chapter was closing. A snake bursting into butterflies signaled the start of a new era with a totally different vibe. I know that I'm a handful, baby. The music video was not only a colorful spectacle, it also hinted to fans what was to come. Indeed, the roughly four minute long clip is full of clues about TS7. The singer let fans know that the title of the second single and the album were hidden in the video, sending them on the funnest goose chase. And when we had that fight out in the rain, you ran after me and called my name. While the neon lover sign was easy to spot, the clever reference to You Need to Calm Down largely slipped under the radar, at least at first. Calme toi, s'il te plaît. Je suis calme! Number 6. Betty, James, and Inez. There's no question that T Swift is a loyal friend. Betty, I won't make assumptions about why you switched to homeroom, but. She practically takes every opportunity to shout out her tight knit crew 
especially Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. Despite referring to her 2020 album Folklore as a work of fiction, Swift couldn't resist the opportunity to reference her good friends. You heard the rumors from Inez, you can't believe a word she says. Eagle-eyed fans noticed that the characters James and Inez were named after the power couple's first two daughters, and suspected Betty was the name of their third. Swift basically confirmed this when she made a nod to the characters' namesakes in her speech for the Album of the Year Grammy in 2021. I want to thank, um, I want to thank James, Inez, and Betty, and their parents, who are the second and third people that I play every new song that I write. Any remaining speculation was put to rest when Reynolds addressed the subject in an interview with Sirius XM. Mystery solved. I mean, what a, what a, what an honor. I don't know. We thought it was pretty, pretty damn amazing. We're, we're, we still and do. Number five, twenty dollars and ten cents. Could a price tag be a clue to an album dropping? If you ask a Swifty, they'll tell you it could very well be. The release of Taylor Swift's pre-recorded albums has become a major game between her and her fans. I do feel the need to like explain what I'm doing because it's not normal. So when Red Taylor's version came out, it's no surprise that Swifties looked into every detail. It struck many as interesting that Swift chose to sell the signed album CD for $20.10, i.e. 2010, the year that Speak Now was originally released. How's life? Tell me how's your family? In addition, the price font was purple, a color synonymous with that album. Speak Now is officially the next re-recording, so it seems unlikely that those things were coincidences. Number 4. Opening the Vault When Swift announced Fearless Taylor's version was coming, she confirmed something that fans long suspected. There would be new songs released on each album. With so many unreleased songs presumably in her catalog, there was no telling what would be unveiled when she re-recorded her six stolen albums. However, Swifties always have fun making guesses. It turns out Swift was having a bit of fun of her own. Before unveiling the track lists for her first two re-recorded albums, Fearless and Red, she opened the literal doors to the vault. And she had fans decode the vault track titles and features themselves. We gotta hand it to her, she's definitely earned her reputation for being chaotic in the best way. Number 3. Tis the Damn Season Some Taylor Swift Easter eggs are more obvious than others, but it's safe to say that nearly everyone missed this one. If I wanted to know who you were hanging with while I was gone, I would have asked you. It was only a few months after the release of Folklore that Entertainment Weekly named Swift one of their 2020 Entertainers of the Year. The singer shared the photo shoot to her Instagram story, commenting on the holiday vibes of her outfit with an apt caption. Little did fans know that a new album was right under their noses all along. We could call it even, you could call me baby. It turns out that Tis the Damn Season was actually a track of her album Evermore, which was released soon after. We're still recovering from the whiplash of this moment. Tis the damn season, right this time, I'm staying at my parents' house. Number 2. The Era's Elevator Taylor Swift is constantly finding new and exciting ways to reinvent her sound and image with each album release. Baby love, I think I've been a little too kind. These chapters of her career are so iconic that she and her fans refer to them as different eras. Shortly before announcing her record-breaking eras tour, Swift played on this idea in her bejeweled music video. She selects the purple button to the third floor in an elevator, hinting that her third studio album Speak Now would be the next release. And when I meet the band, they ask, do you have a man? I can still say I don't remember. She also later heads to the purple-coated 13th level, another clue in that direction. With the announcement of Speak Now Taylor's version, we can't help but notice that she also visits floor 5 at one point. Is 1989 Taylor's version next? Only time will tell. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
you have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Not a lot going on at the moment. What started as a simple phrase has become synonymous with T-Swift's amazingly chaotic energy. It feels like a perfect night to dress up like hipsters and make fun of our exes. Back in 2013, she released the 22 music video, where she donned a sequin top that featured the saying. It's miserable and magical. Seven years later, the message became an extra important part of Swifty lore when Swift used it to caption a seemingly innocent selfie in April 2020. What many assumed was in reference to COVID-19 was actually a cheeky nod to her upcoming album Folklore. A text exchange later released by collaborator Aaron Dessner confirmed that the pair were working on Cardigan around that time. Fans were duped again in November 2020 when Swift posted another picture with the same caption this time hinting at Evermore. That's the mastermind at her finest. I gotta have you, I gotta have you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.